we could either work today or we can have a snowball fight. I what? vote for that. Snowball fight or work? Snowball fight. Oh. Then work. <laughs> Mother Nature is just trying to psych us out, that's all. It's trying to let us know that winter's coming, but we always say here that there's two seasons, winter and getting ready for winter. Thankfully, the house is comfortable. We're actually good to go for winter. We obviously have a lot of work that we want to get done before winter comes, but there's still a lot of work to do in the winter. In fact, if you're not from a northern climate, it's actually not uncommon for people to work all through the, the winter. I mean, once the wet seasons kind of get by, that's kind of the hard part, ironically, is fall and spring. But once everything's good and frozen, it's not too terrible. Of course, if you work in the ground, that sucks because it's frozen, but once it's dry and sunny like today, I grew up in a climate like this and it's beautiful to work in. It's a little crisp and you got to bundle up and wear some gloves and stuff, but blue sky, nice, beautiful, sunny day, hard to be mad. So yesterday's video was pretty heavy and it didn't have a lot to do with sawmilling as much as it had to do with economics. We kind of talk about the economics of why milling this lumber makes a lot of sense and how from a pre-tax, no sales tax, not trading our labor, for US dollars, we're actually increasing the value of our labor by 40%. It's kind of a fascinating concept. So yesterday we matched the production from the previous day, but we did it in half the time. Part of it is because the sawmill's not running the, correctly. I'm not really sure why we haven't caught to the bottom of it. We keep kind of doing little tiny things. We just did a quick tune up, threw some spark plugs in there, changed the fuel filter, cleaned the air cleaner, um, shot some carb cleaner in there to maybe free up anything that might be stuck. And well, it's just not running great. We just uh, siphoned the gas that was in the tank out just in case there was any water in there. We did run some gas dryer through it. So you can kind of see that we're kind of going through the baby stuff first. Here's hoping it's just something simple and there's not something uh, more catastrophically wrong. But anyway, diagnosing all that fun stuff took us a couple of hours the first day. And yesterday we just worked through it. We didn't really uh, try to work too much on the sawmill. And then we also kind of got in the groove. And despite the snow and the rain and losing daylight, we still knocked out an equal amount of wood in half the time. So today we're gonna to try to knock out these logs. We called the rental agency and we were able, we were cleared to delay getting the chipper one day. So we're gonna do that. We really need to get all this stuff milled up so that we have all the mill ends that we can then turn into wood chips. This is a bit of a complex layered strategy. If this is the first video you're watching, jump back three or four videos. We basically started with dropping a dead tree that was by our house because the weather service warned that we were gonna get a blast of wind and uh, winter weather in September. And then we used the chainsaw mill and we made a post, that was fun. Then we went to the back of the property and we started working on getting some of the dead trees that have been back there for a while cleaned up and getting the brush cleaned up and that's kind of where we are now so if you haven't seen those we fall these dead trees we actually get them all onto a trailer which was fun never done that before got them around here and then we've spent two afternoons uh, or so uh, milling up the lumber that we have so this lumber is a bit of a tragedy because it's beautiful blue pine there's even some spalting in it which is just beautiful but right now what we need is lumber to do the interior walls for the house well we don't need it at this exact moment but right now is good sawmilling weather uh, before things really get frozen solid if you've never tried to run a sawmill when things are frozen I can tell you it's a pain in the butt for example the water that lubricates the blade is nearly impossible to keep from freezing ask me how I know we did it so right now we're still kind of teetering on freezing which means we can still get some sawmilling done so we're turning this otherwise beautiful blue wood that a lot of people would pay a lot of money for into lumber that we can then use to build the false floor and the loft and the interior walls. It's a bit redundant. I've shared this in a couple of the last videos, but I'll share it one more time. Part of the reason that uh, we want to mill this stuff now is two, uh, two things. One, it's not completely dry, so it's not really ready to go inside of an interior wall. You really want to be using dry wood for that. Um, it can dry out, but if you, if you, if you seal it up with walls and sheetrock and paint and all that stuff and there's still moisture in the wood, that's not really a good thing. Uh, the other thing is because this stuff is beetle kill, there's a slim chance that there might be some bugs in it. And so we'd really rather let it sit out and freeze really good and hopefully kill any bugs that might be present in it. That way when we build with it, we don't get a sudden surprise of bugs in our house. To help speed this process up, I created a cheat sheet. And this is all based off of 
uh, inch and a half nominal lumber. So if I need one board, I need an inch and a half of wood. If I need two boards, I need three and one eighth inch of wood. And that's because of the thickness of the blade kerf. So for every board we add, we have to add an inch and a half and an eighth of an inch for the blade kerf. So I don't have to think, I just created a cheat sheet. And that helps me to very quickly look at a log and say, okay, I have eight inches. I know that I can get five boards done. And we're generating a bit of waste over here. The good news is we have wasted nothing from our sawmill. Everything has turned into something. The sawdust has gone into compost. The wood chips have gone into the garden. A lot of the other wood has gone into firewood. And of course we're generating resaw, which we'll use to make lumber out of things that aren't perfect coming off of the sawmill. So the temptation when you mill something like this is to try to get every last little bit of wood out of there. But the reality is you're just going to have some waste no matter what you try to do. I guess the only way to have no waste would be to build with round logs. During this milling process, we often have a little extra wood in a log. So we just kind of find that if we think we can get a board out of it, we go for it. And, and if it produces a board that looks like we can trim down later, we put it in this pile, it's called resaw. And this is pretty time consuming and tedious because it's one board often, and you have to make two cuts to get one board. So ultimately it's not very efficient, but otherwise it would just be waste. So each one of these boards is gonna end up becoming something. It looks like we have four or five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13 boards. So that's gonna produce another good chunk of lumber. In fact, just those boards is almost equal to the productivity of yesterday. So that gives you some idea how much of this wood can actually be salvaged. All right, for once we're getting an early start. So mark my words, by the end of the day, all these things are gonna be turned into lumber. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13 logs to go only 13 locks. I am at six and three quarters. Six and seven eighths. Perfect. Two, three. You think there's a board in there, but by the time you get down to here, that board is gone. So unless you need a six foot board that you're willing to work your butt off for, better to use this for firewood or wood chips. Two, three. I think we're gonna throw that in the resaw because we could probably use that for something. Maybe we won't use it for building in the house necessarily, but sometimes you just need an eight foot board for something. So that's a total of four two by six 12 and we got one resaw so that little tiny log produced five boards if you paid retail those are nine dollars and five cents a piece <clears throat> if you had sales tax and you had your income tax i think the price jumped up to over 13 dollars per board so let's use the pre-tax value because we're not paying any tax on those boards so five of those at 13 bucks would be 65 dollars not bad for about 30 minutes worth of work. There you go. That's only one log down. We've got 12 to go. Better get started. Mayday, mayday, mayday. So this tree we knew had metal in it 
and we tried to get the metal out of it that we could see. But there's always metal that you can't see and I think this is a risk of sawing these types of trees where they're on private property. I've heard stories of people literally at sawmills cutting through electrical boxes that the tree had grown around and they weren't discovered until it's going through the sawmill. Of course, they have metal detectors, things like that, to try to help minimize that, but not every sawmill does and they don't catch everything. So that right there is a bullet. So you can kind of see this wound on the tree. That wound came from people nailing stuff to that tree. You know what I'm gonna think they nailed to that tree? A target. So there's one, two, three nails right there. At least three that we have found so far. Oh yeah, there it comes. That's a good looking bullet. Hoo hoo hoo. Look at that. Look what I found down here. Another something metal. Yep. It's the other half. Oh, that looks like a 22. There's another one right here, right? See all of it? So that might be either a bullet that imploded when it hit or shotgun. Except it's copper, right? I don't really see anything more. Sounds like there's more on this side. Oh. Oh yeah, there we go. Oh, it's over here. Yep. I see it there. Oh yeah, there it is. Ooh. Ooh, what do we have there? Looks 2, like a... 243. 22, 243. Yeah, that's a bullet for sure. There's something oddly satisfying about like digging bullets out of trees. So that's a bullet too. Out she comes. Ooh. It's got a copper jacket on it. Well, that's what we found in just one cut. <laughs> wow. Thankfully, I don't think it damaged the blade because it's so soft that, you know, it's probably no, no harder than uh, the wood around a knot, I would imagine. Unlike a nail, which will really damage a blade bad. Well, I got more bad news. We definitely damaged the blade. See the striations there? That's a nick in the blade for sure. So it's time to switch out the blade. Doggone it. Must be breast cancer month. I know, that's what I said. You must know we're working hard over here. I do, I and I know I know how good a hot drink tastes Oof. when you're working this hard. So there's gonna be bullets in our walls. Are you okay with that? Yeah. Okay. Fits in with the It territory. seems like a rite of passage. If you're in North Idaho, you have stuff that has bullets in it. Thank I you. Give this to Anna before mm -hmm. I drink it. She probably doesn't yep. want it in the excavator. She might. It has a cup holder. Oh, is there a cup holder? Nothing else she's doing has a cup holder. Going good, guys. That log much quicker. Still took a little bit. Um, I think we yielded seven boards out of that guy. So we're doing pretty good so far today. We're actually over the production from yesterday already, and we're only two hours in. So hopefully there's a chance we can get all these logs done. Moving and grooving. Did we cut your house open? Yeah, we're evicting you. Take that. Anybody else want to come out? Because we're coming in. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, there goes one. Well, we were cruising right along, but when we kicked all those bugs out of their house, it turns out they were hiding in a pretty rotten piece of wood bunch of kind of raw evidencing itself on the side here. The positive to this is that this was a two by eight. So we should be able just to flip these on their side really quick, knock them back to two by sixes 
and we won't have lost this lumber. I think it sucks because it's just enough. It's just enough of the board that I think we shouldn't try to trust it as a board. You know, maybe we end up needing it for a stud or something and the temptation is to use it. So I think we'll flip these real quick, make two by sixes out of them and it won't be a complete loss. Well, it looks like that got us below that rotten part. So those look like perfectly good two by sixes. Super satisfying. Aw, oh, just pieces. It's just the jacket. Where's the bullet? One bullet, two bullets. Ooh, there's a big chunk. Where'd it go? Right there. <laughs> yeah, that's a big chunk of bullet right there.
Oh yeah, don't forget the big honking stickers. Honkers. Killed it today, like machines. Uh, guys, we definitely ran into lots of problems this afternoon, but we've worked through all of them. One that we ran into a couple of times, we had logs up on the sawmill and we already were cutting into them. And then it became obvious that the log was actually broken. Um, there's one sitting right here that we identified as soon as we put on the mill, we started chipping away the bark and we noticed this huge break in it. This was not visible when the bark was on there, but look at this monster break and it literally goes like right down the middle of the log. So this log is firewood. There's no point in milling that up. Huge waste of time. We had that happen with, I think, three logs total. One of them is why we made these big honking stickers. We just realized that once we got to cutting into it, there was just a menagerie of problems. We had bugs in there, rot in there, and it was actually broken, which makes perfect sticker material. That one log would have upped our board count by three more two by eights, but we had to sacrifice it to the sticker gods. It's okay, we actually needed big honking stickers anyway. We were gonna put another log up there to make stickers. So I think it worked out really good because we didn't have to do that. We also made a bunch more dainty stickers, which we used to go between the boards. And then we had one other log that we noticed had a break in it, but we kept sawing it anyway, just hoping that there was good lumber in there. And turns out there's actually eight feet of good wood. We just spray painted the ends pink to remind ourselves that that's not a reliable board. It's gonna need to be trimmed down. So we're trying to maximize each one of these logs, but nothing but challenges with each one of them. And we found a whole bunch more bullets. So today is the day where we popped our bullet cherry. And uh, I don't know how many calipers we found, and I don't know how many bullets we found, four but calibers, four? Yeah. Four calibers? No way. All right, so we, we, we broke through that barrier. It's pretty exciting to know that in our walls, someday someone, if they buy this house 150 years from now and they decided to take it apart, they're gonna find bullets in the wall. We decided toward the end of the day to actually bag the last two logs that are sitting over there in favor of doing the resaw. We got it all done and it just makes a horrible mess, which is perfect because we've got the chipper coming tomorrow and all of that is perfect for the chipper. You know, there might be a one by board in there and if you guys want it, you can come get it. You better get here by the morning because otherwise it's all going in the chipper and it's gonna be wood chips. So what we've got to do is get all this lumber uh, finished, stacked, and then we can sticker it permanently here. We'll tarp it and we'll just let it dry for a little while until we're ready to start working on the interior walls. Uh, Anna, didn't you find larvae? Do you guys want to see this? This is absolutely disgusting. And this, this is what would be inside of our walls if we took this lumber inside right now. So that is a larvae and that was in the wood, Anna found it while we were stacking. It's a pine borer. It's a pine borer? Yep. Pine nice. Borer Take that, sucker. You're not going in our house. He's probably gonna freeze to death out here, right? He will. Perfect. <laughs> not to be vicious or anything. The other option is we feed him to the birds. I mean, either way, he's going down. And partly, this is what kills these trees. So, sayonara, buddy. I have a small confession to make, guys. We had some friends who came over and picked some wood out of the boneyard. And then they said, I, we were like, we couldn't sleep because we kept hearing this like <coughs> sound. It was a beetle that was in the wood that they took home and they made some shelving out of it. And all they could hear was a stupid beetle in there like sawing away. I think it was a Sawyer beetle. And they make this kind of like cheeking little sound. And so uh, we don't really want that in the walls. And so to those friends, if you're watching this video, I'm really sorry, we don't know what's in the wood. It's wood, you, got, you get what you get. It's chilly.